okay everyone so it is one week ago today since I gave birth to my baby girl I've had lots of questions about why her and I ended up in hospital for so long after the birth so this is just a little video explaining my birth story and why we were in hospital for so long so to begin with I just want to explain like this is my birth story if you are pregnant watching this I don't want you to think oh my god mine could go like that because each and every woman has a different labouring experience and just because mine didn't go to plan doesn't necessarily mean yours won't go to plan but <clears throat> each and every birth is different I've had, I've had four friends who've recently had children and each and every one of us have had a completely different labouring experience so just because you're hearing my story now which wasn't the most positive don't think that yours is going to go the same I'll go back to the beginning, which was last Thursday evening when I started getting contractions. Um, they wasn't regular, they wasn't powerful enough to go to the hospital yet, so I just stayed at home. Um, and I didn't actually go to the hospital until early hours of Saturday morning, where I was told to go home and labour because I was only actually one centimetre dilated, which is confusing because the midwife earlier that week had told me that I was two centimetres dilated already. So that was really disheartening. I got sent home and I was labouring at home. So I spent the day, I went for a short walk. I had, um, I went on my bouncy ball. I had a curry, um, just trying to like speed up the process. And around about 5 p.m. on Saturday evening, the real intense contractions kicked in, which was scary but also really exciting because it meant like this is it now I'm so close to meeting my baby girl. At around about 5 p.m. the contractions started getting really intense and um, they became more regular so I decided to get in the bath because a bath, getting a bath is a form of pain relief during pregnancy or during labour because it's soothing um, and I was actually in the bath until 9 at night. Now throughout this whole process I I did a hypnobirthing course with a company called This Mum Liverpool and this is not me just trying to advertise a company, this is genuine. Like I would really really recommend doing a hypnobirthing course because that is the one thing that kept me calm throughout this entire labouring process because I thought labour would be like you see in a movie, your waters go, contractions start, baby appears and obviously it's not like that. My labour was a long, long, slow process and this hypnobirthing course, the techniques that I learned, um, the breathing techniques, the, the mind, mind techniques, what you should think like and just, just everything they teach you, it really kept me calm throughout the entire labour and process so I would not recommend birthing, a, a hypnobirthing course enough, like it's, you, even if you can get one online or anything, they are amazing. Um, so yeah, so 9pm, I was in the bath from 5 till 9 um, and I decided at 9pm that it was time to go to the hospital because I my contractions have become very, very regular, they're very long, very intense and I was convinced that I'd get to the hospital and they'd be like, yeah, you're like 7 centimetres dilated, not much further to go and it was not like that at all. So I got to the hospital um, just after 9 and I literally crawled through the doors of the hospital because I was having a contraction. I got put in a wheelchair and wheeled to a room where I was met by a midwife who examined me only to tell me that I was still only two centimeters dilated, but the pain I was in at the time and how frequent the contractions were, I was like pleading with her, like, please do not send me home because the actual procedure is if you're less than four centimeters dilated, you get usually sent home to, to labour at home because you labour at home better you, because you're more relaxed and um, that was one of the reasons I was originally going to do a home birth which now looking back I'm so glad that I never um, so because I was in so much pain the midwife decided to keep me in and I was with my friend Natasha who is my birthing partner I don't know if I just said that anyway she um, put us in a room and with a birthing pool and I was in and out the birthing pool all night um, she examined me in the morning I was in and out the birthing pool I was on, on and off the bed I was crawling around the floor I was like in complete agony for the entire night 
only to be examined in the morning to find out I was still only two centimeters dilated, which was the most disheartening thing ever because I've been in so much pain for the whole night that it was like, why aren't I dilating? Like, what is wrong with me? I just couldn't understand it. But I did use the hypnobirthing course throughout this whole process and I remained positive and I remembered that things change, things don't go to plan and just to remain calm and try and handle the pain as best as I can. Um, so the midwife that I had overnight, her shift ended, she went home and got another midwife. This midwife gave me gas and air and she left me in the birthing pool again. She come back and checked on me throughout the day and each and every time she examined me I was still only two centimeters dilated it was like I was just stuck there which was really really hard because it was like if I was dilating at least I'd know that this pain was getting me somewhere but at this point I was getting nowhere I was still I was just stuck um so this went on now until 5 p.m on the Sunday um where the hospital said like they feel like they need to step in um, at this point my waters still hadn't broken either so they stepped in they said we're going to break your waters and put you on a drip what's the drip called um a hormone drip to which is basically like they induce labor to try and get me into what is technically called active labor so i um got put on the drip and they broke my waters and um they left me for five hours. I got an epidural as well. They gave me an epidural because the pain was becoming so intense it was and it was probably just gonna get worse by breaking my waters and giving me the hormone drip. So they left me there for five hours. They examined me again and I was still two centimetres dilated. Now at this point I was on like a monitor like on my belly to monitor the baby's heartbeat and stuff like that and monitor the contractions because this had just been going on now three days and I just wasn't dilating and baby's heart rate started going through the roof and then it started dropping. Oh, I think she might have just been sick. No. Oh, she's such a good babe by the way. Um, yeah, so they came to me and they said basically we need to talk about doing a cesarean, a c-section because I was just getting nowhere um, they said you know you can give it like another hour or so to see how you get on but by the way things have been going and by baby's heart rate we're not sure how safe it is and we're gonna have to just step in and we're just we're just gonna have to give you a cesarean basically so we can either do it now or we can wait like an hour to see if you get any further and I decided that it was best to I could tell by the doctors what they were saying it, that I was having a cesarean regardless I w I'd been in labour for three days, I weren't getting anywhere, so an extra hour weren't gonna make any difference. So we decided to go down for a cesarean. Um, so they like strengthened the epidural or something like that and took me down to theatre within, I'd say, maybe 20 to 30 minutes of me saying yes to the cesarean. Um, I have honestly never ever ever been so petrified in my life a cesarean is something that has never actually crossed my mind I've always thought about labour as giving birth naturally and I was really excited to give birth naturally without even having pain relief just gas and air so at this point after having an epidural after having different um, pain relief after now getting a cesarean it was just like so surreal to me it was so petrifying I lay on the table I was like shaking like a leaf I could feel like the sensation of them cutting me open and stuff and moving me around as trying to get the baby out. And I was so scared. And then as soon as I heard that baby cry, it was like everything just went away. I wasn't scared anymore. Nothing mattered. And they pulled down like the little curtain in front of me and I got to see the baby for the first time. And it was so surreal that I forgot that I was just lying on a theatre table with my belly open <laughs> like nothing mattered the pain I've been going through for the past three days didn't matter like the love that you feel was so intense and so amazing that everything just gets forgotten about straight away and looking back now 
like there was nothing to be scared of to get a cesarean these doctors do this day in day out in an emergency or planned they, they, they know what they're doing the professionals so I shouldn't have been scared but I was um, but yeah that wasn't the end of what was to come it wasn't just as simple as having the cesarean and getting sewn back up because after the cesarean finished they um, took my temperature and it was like 39.6 degrees celsius and um, baby had a temperature um, I started going a little bit faint and it turns out like there was an infection in my womb um, so they took baby away they put bit give baby some antibiotics and they um give me some antibiotics i'm trying to remember like i was so in a blur at this point that i was so unsure of what was going on because i remember feeling really sleepy and tired but being like what do you want about and they're like you have a temperature we think you have an infection but i just didn't know what they were on about so basically because a long story short um we got treated for sepsis um, and that's why we were in hospital for five mm. days because um, they did blood tests in baby's blood and it, the, the infection rate is meant to be like in it, below 10 and hers was 56 or something so each day she had an antibiotic drip, I had an antibiotic drip and then I went into antibiotic tablets mm. um, and on day five of being in hospital her infection rate was only 6 so we were allowed to go home and originally it was meant we were meant to stay for an extra couple of days so yeah so the reason we were in hospital is we were treated for sepsis and we are fine now we are healthy we are happy and i can't wait to tell you all her name and introduce you to her all properly which i will be doing very soon she's just amazing and perfect and even though I went through three days of complete torture and hell, she was worth absolutely everything. And even though now I've got my little scar on my belly, I'm just going to see that as a gift from her. I love and cherish it. And I'm, so, I'm just so happy and overjoyed.